Hey YouTube, it's Penny. I'd like to share um, some things that I was shown in late December that I believe I'll tie together. So starting with December 30th, I had a vision of posts or poles uh, lined up in a long row and they were extending, you know, out of sight. There were two empty posts directly in front of me and I saw what I understood were bad people tying up good people to the posts. At which point I noticed all the other posts had people tied to them as well. So as I looked down, it was like all of a sudden now they're all full. And these people were all naked and singing. Kind of reminded me of the stories, you know, in like Fox's Book of Martyrs about how people who were martyred were, um, a lot of them were singing uh, upon their death. So, and it was interesting because, you know, the, the vision of these people being tied up, it, it almost looked like, a, you know, like when the old idea of being tied to a railroad track. Um, and because if you'd taken all these posts that were lined up vertically and if you'd laid them down horizontally, it would have looked like a railroad track. So um, upon waking, I heard the number 283. And I looked it up in the Strong's Concordance, and it's A-M-I-A-N-T-O-S. Not quite sure how to pronounce that. Um, but it means undefiled, untainted free from contamination, unstained, harmless, separate, holy, innocent, and pure. So I believe that the Father was describing the people that I saw who were being tied up. Uh, Revelation 6, 9, 9, excuse me, 6, 9 through 11 says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Yahuwah, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell upon the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So it's interesting that I saw them naked. And here the scripture says that they were given white robes. So backing up, um, on December 21st, I received a vision of Adolf Hitler, um, which at the time seemed to kind of come from left field because he wasn't anywhere on my radar screen. I hadn't been reading about Hitler or anything like that. So um, I saw him in a court of law standing behind the table for the defense, and he was making this eloquent speech you know, in defense of himself and the atrocities that he had committed against the Jewish people during World War II. And I was, I got to get up pretty close to him in this vision and, you know, really look at his face and stuff. And I thought to myself, wow, it's a lot more attractive than I thought that he would be. And I also was really surprised at how convincing and persuasive he was. And I kind of felt like I was being given a little bit of a glimpse into how he could have deceived so many people um, during that time period. Well, a couple days later, on December 26th, L.A. Marzulli posted a commentary on his blog um, about the Muslim-Nazi connection. And it's interesting because since the time I had this vision, I've seen lots of stuff now about, you know, Nazism. So anyway, um, but I was struck by this photograph, which depicts members of Hezbollah displaying the Nazi hand salute. So you can click on the link below if you want to read the, the whole article. But one of the things that L.A. wrote was, sadly, most Americans will never see this on the 6 o'clock news and thus will remain ignorant of the vitriol that is reaching a fevered pitch. What do you think the average American would do if he or she saw the Nazi salute, which has become synonymous with death and genocide? So on December 26, I had a vision of a gavel. That's all I saw, no words no understanding, I just wrote down gavel, it was interesting, um, I was describing it to David the next morning, explaining that it had a, a wooden handle, like it looked really old, um, and the head of the, the mallet part was made of stone. Well, the very same day, December 26, elect sister 777 received a word about justice, and uh, as I was reading her blog, <laughs> About fell over in my chair. She posted a picture of the very same gavel that I had seen the same night that she received this word about justice. Um, so the Lord said to her, my judgments are written in my word. My word is eternal justice upon the nations. 
my justice. You will know that I am the Lord. So as we see, you know, this justice fall upon the nations, we need to recognize it for what it is. It's holy, righteous justice. Um, because the, the true judge um, is rendering an opinion um, and his, his judgments are true. On January 10th, um, I saw a woman talking, but she suddenly stopped and then there was silence. And then I heard the spirit of Antichrist Okay, so upon waking, the scripture that came to my mind was Revelation 18, 23, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in you, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in you. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of the Kodeshim, which means the saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Hi, David here. If you've been watching Penny's videos for any length of time, you'll know that a lot of the messages that she gets from the Lord are about persecution. And this uh, message is no different. And after praying about it, the Spirit has led me to add some comments here at the end that I would like to uh, share with you now about encouraging you to be a doer. We know that uh, difficult times, tribulations, judgment are coming on the earth. We know that. We read that in the Word. And we know that the Lord will not tarry forever. So while we have time, we need to be in the Word. We need to be the seed that fell on the good ground not the seed that fell on the stony ground where it had no root. We need to have roots in the Word so that when persecution comes, we can withstand it and that we can also be productive, produce a hundredfold for the Lord. And also, likewise, the house that's built on the rock. When persecution comes against you, if you have a solid foundation in the Word, then when it comes, you will be able to withstand it. So, as James said, in uh, 122, be a doer today. Be a doer of the word. Not just hear the word, but do the word. And make a daily commitment to turn away from sin, to read the word, to be in prayer, and follow the commandments. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Malek Haolam. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe. Amen.